Well, an Illinois judge now removing Donald Trump from appearing on the state's primary ballot, citing his role in the January 6th riot at the Capitol. That judge, though, is also putting the ruling on hold now, pending an appeal from Trump's team. Joining us now is Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley, law professor at George Washington University. Jonathan, um, so Illinois joins Maine and Colorado in trying to strip the president off the ballot. What, if anything, distinguishes the case, the legal case being put forward by the judge here from the two other states? Well, for one thing, it doesn't matter. It's perfectly superfluous. Most judges have said we're waiting for the Supreme Court. There was no reason for this court to issue this opinion. It's basically a cut and paste from Colorado. Uh, she basically just accepted everything Colorado had said and put her own name on it. And it has that feeling of sort of, well, me too, I want to be included, but she's not going to be included. This is not going to be in front of the Supreme Court. We expect a decision any day now. And the oral argument did not go well. It was not the conservatives that asked the most difficult questions. It were justices from the left of the court uh, who raised a number of the problems, including Justice Jackson, who said, look, this is ambiguous. Why should I adopt the least democratic interpretation of this constitution? constitutional amendment, that doesn't bode well. So most people are expecting that the court uh, will roundly reject this theory and this disqualification effort. Well, the three are far from alone, as you know. I think 35, 36 states have now filed some kind of legal challenge to the former president's candidacy. We checked with the brain room here at Fox News. They tell us um, of those 36, 36 uh, challenges, Biden carried 22 back in 2020. Trump carried... 14. Does that give us a clue into what's happening in the legal system? Hmm. Well, look, there are people, there are academics who have good faith reasons why they think that insurrection means something much broader under this amendment. I strongly disagree with that. I think that they're wrong on the history. I think they're definitely wrong on the text of the Constitution. But this is being pushed by a number of Democratic uh, you know, secretaries of state, like the ones uh, in Colorado and in Maine. Uh, in Maine, you had a secretary of state that, that had been saying since the uh, inauguration that this was an insurrection uh, brought about by Trump. So these advocates knew where to go, and there was hardly any surprise. They had her at hello uh, when they showed up and asked for disqualification. Um, in the wake of the Supreme Court's uh, sort of gangbusters decision yesterday to take up Trump's immunity claims. A whole lot of analysts and journalists folks are sort of questioning the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. Now, take a listen uh, to this from Rachel Maddow. I want to get your response. This is BS. You are doing this as a dilatory tactic to help your political, uh, your political friend, your partisan patron. And for, for you to say that this is something that the court needs to decide because it's something that's unclear in the law is just flagrant, flagrant bullpucky and they know it, and they don't care that we know it, and that's disturbing about the future legitimacy of the court. All right, what do you make of that? Well, I wrote about this on my blog this morning because this is why you have such anger. This is why people go to the homes of justices. Is this is what they hear in this echo chamber, that the court is a bunch of robotic, uh, partisan hacks. Uh, you've had de law school deans refer to them as hacks. And what people hear about that, but they don't hear the truth, that the, the Supreme Court has ruled against Donald Trump, against conservative causes regularly, including uh, the conservatives on the court. Uh, you had one person yesterday say that, well, this just shows the court is part of the insurrection and the insurrection is ongoing. You know, that type of rhetoric is what's fueling the rage in this country. The court accepted this for review. There are issues here. It's a long standing debate. I think that Trump is at a disadvantage on the merits. But some of the justices may have serious questions of where to draw this line, that is, to tell future presidents when they are or not protected. So this rhetoric is dangerous, and it's wrong. Uh, a lot of rage to go around. It will uh, kill you young. Jonathan, <laughs> we got to leave it there. Thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.